My name is uh, Dr. Richard Chop. I'm the senior member of the urology team at this point. Uh, I've been in Austin since 1983. Probably my name is uh, Dr. Richard Chop has been most closely associated with vasectomy because I've done lots and lots of those. But uh, my interest uh, has been over the past 15 years in newer ways of diagnosis of prostate cancer and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what has happened and what has been the evolutionary process of learning more about prostate cancer, the various tests that have come on board and what we do with that and what are the things that have occurred in the past actually a few years that has given us a different direction for prostate cancer diagnosis and treatment. The whole evolution of diagnosis and management of prostate cancer has undergone changes since the mid-1940s. Uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Huggins who was the first to understand that prostate tissue and prostate cancer tissue had a characteristic which is called hormonal dependency, meaning that normal prostate tissue and prostate cancer tissue depended upon male hormones circulating around the blood for them to grow. Once this fact was discovered, uh, most men were treated from the mid-1950s till actually about 1970 or so with certain drugs that removed the male hormone from the bloodstream and in effect took away the gasoline for the engine. Subsequent to that time, uh, we were trying to look for newer ways to diagnose prostate cancer at an earlier time so that we could intervene with uh, appropriate treatments. In the early 1980s, uh, the PSA blood test, which stands for prostate specific antigen, emerged. And the hope was that this blood test was going to be the magic marker that would uh, allow us to differentiate men who had prostate cancer and those who didn't. About the same time, uh, ultrasound of the prostate, which is done with a rectal probe, uh, also emerged. And these two tests together led to much earlier diagnosis of men with prostate cancer but probably also ended up uh, with the effect of having too many biopsies at too early, uh, too early of an age of their prostate cancer and probably over treatment of prostate cancer. And so over the past 20 years, and certainly over the past 12, 10 or 12 years, the whole treatment philosophy for prostate cancer has changed. What we really needed was a much better imaging uh, test so that we could see not only the outline of the prostate but what was happening on the inside of the prostate. Ultrasound was fine for uh, allowing us to see the prostate but it really didn't tell us what was going on in the inside of the prostate. So in the late 1990s uh, and early 2000, uh, a newer type of an MRI x-ray of the prostate uh, emerged. Classically and traditionally MRIs were used by our orthopedic friends uh, because they were good for anatomy. So if, you're, if you blew out your knee playing football or you fell on your shoulder and you broke it, the orthopods could do an MRI and, and see if the anatomy was correct or not. During that time, if we were to do an MRI of a man's prostate, it would show the outline, but really never showed us what was going on in the inside of the prostate. So there was a few uh, gentlemen, one of which was uh, Dr. Mark Emberton from London, who developed some newer types of MRIs that actually looked at blood flow inside the prostate. The theory being that if there is prostate cancer cells present in the prostate, that these cells seem to be more densely packed together than normal prostate tissue and because of that the blood flow through this 
densely packed area is restricted and we can actually see that on these new multi-parametric MRIs. Additionally, uh, the theory is that the blood cell or the blood vessels that go through prostate cancer cells seem to be more porous or leaky and when we give men a drug called gadolinium during the MRI test itself, we can see these leaks showing up. And so this new multiparametric MRI uh, came on the scene in the United States about five or six years ago and uh, we were fortunate enough to bring MRI of the prostate to Austin about that time. We now have the ability then to do a multiparametric MRI in any man who comes to the urology team who's had an elevation in their PSA or a more popular story is one of which a gentleman has had one or two or even three biopsies uh, and no cancer has found but their, but their PSA continues to rise. Those are the gentlemen that we send for a multi-parametric MRI. And behind me, what we see is an MRI image uh, that shows us the outline of the prostate, but also shows us a target of suspicion. And so uh, Dr. Amy Salinas from Austin Radiological Association reads all of my MRIs and she actually sends me a picture of the suspicious areas on the MRI as outlined here and I actually get a target that looks like this and this is a 3D reconstruction of what the prostate looks like with the target here. What we really needed then uh, once we had this MRI is, is a method in order to assure us that we could get through these targets uh, every time that we did the biopsies. Backing up just for a minute, the biopsies that we had done uh, over the past 20 years uh, had really been what we call random biopsies or blind biopsies in that we took biopsies from each side of the prostate, but if, if we could not assure ourselves that we could get through this target, because if we did the biopsies here and here but didn't get through this target, then we'd miss the tumor. Over the past few years, uh, there have been some newer type of machines, which we call smart biopsy machines, in which the MRI picture is downloaded into the machine. And this happens to be one of the machines that we use. It's called a Euronav machine. And so the MRI picture is downloaded into this machine. The ultrasound machine uh, which sits next to us and is hooked up into that then allows us to put the ultrasound picture directly over this MRI picture and therefore we can make sure that we send a uh, biopsy needle directly through these areas and what we've seen here then is a, a picture of this is a uh, reconstruction of the needle track through this area of suspicion. Here it is down here, the area in green is the what we think is probably the prostate tumor, and here's the needle track through the side of this tumor. And this has dramatically changed uh, how we approach men who have suspicious areas on their MRI. We no longer do random biopsies. Uh, all these biopsies that are done now with our Euronav machine assures us that if there's an area of suspicion we can get through that. Now do we ever miss a tumor? Probably, but the the percentage of misses now are probably in the range of three or four percent where in the old days when we did random biopsies the percentage of misses may be in the range of 40 or 50 percent. So we've done a whole transformational shift in how we approach men with uh, suspicious areas on the prostate either by physical exam or suspicion by increasing areas of PSA uh, or people who come into me with stories of having had multiple biopsies before but not having any had a diagnosis. 
This then leads us to all different types of treatment philosophies uh, in that if we can be assured that there is just one area of tumor present, then oftentimes we will go in and treat just this one area. And, and the treatment of prostate cancer has taken a shift in the past 10 years in that we often treat it as a chronic illness as opposed to a condition that will cause the demise in everybody that gets prostate cancer because a lot of the various treatments that have been used and employed in the past 50 years have lots of side effects uh, such as uh, incontinence of urine and impotency which we call uh, quality of life issues and so what we'd like to be able to do now is be able to treat men with a more tailored approach so that the quality of life issues are preserved but still give them the chance of beating the area of the prostate cancer that they may have. Do we still employ uh, surgery and radiation? Certainly. But we now have other modalities of treatment such as cryotherapy, which we use more as focal treatment. Uh, sometimes we use HIFU, which is a heat treatment for prostate cancer. And there are several other modalities of treatment out there that we will use now to more tailor our approach to the treatment of prostate cancer.